14, uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, 5 through 14. When you find that, if you'll stand. Kings chapter 3, we'll read 5 through 14. When you have that, say amen. amen. Starting in verse 5. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him his, this kind, great kindness that thou hast given him, a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this so great, thy, uh, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for... Uh, great example of wisdom that you have given us here and thank you for the promises and the examples that you have given us if we'll just walk in, in, in your statutes and in your ways and in your commandments like, uh, like, like some of these great men and women of God did that we read about in your word Lord then we can reap the same benefits in our life Lord help us to help us not just to read over these words Lord help us to soak them in and and live by them, Father, so that we can see the same results in our own personal lives. Lord, I pray that you would bless the preaching and the singing tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. I hope we're not out of Easter songs by next week. We've been singing them. That's awesome. That's awesome. I always love that song. Amen. You can charge hell with a squirt gun after that. Man. Three things God looks for before giving wisdom. Three things God looks for before giving wisdom. And God knows we need wisdom to make it through this world, stay married, uh, raise our kids, whatever. And here we have the story of Solomon becoming king, David's son. And David, Solomon's dad, had died, and Solomon is now king, and he's responsible now for leading God's people. In verse 5, chapter 3, we notice that the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and asked Solomon what he should give him. Wow. Has God ever appeared to you in a dream and said, Keith, anything you want, I'll give it to you. Nope, no, not me. Anybody in here? No. Well, this actually happened. Okay. And in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I shall give thee. Wow. That is, uh, that would be on our bucket list, wouldn't it, to happen in our lives. Uh, I wonder what we would ask for if God appeared to us and asked, what shall I give you, Fred Mendoza? A hundred houses to sell? <laughs> now, you, you could just ask for a mansion and all the money in the bank. You wouldn't need to sell no houses, right? Um, I'm sure some of us would ask for a brand new car. Brand new truck, riches maybe, new home, land, uh, a boat maybe, big old boat, health, we'd ask for health, I'm sure. Um, maybe some people looking for a wife or a husband would ask for either or. We'd ask for children to turn out right, for our kids to turn out right. Uh, husbands, you might ask, God, would you give me a button so I could push it and allow my wife to speak whenever I push that button? <laughs> the ladies, maybe a button you could push that would stop your husband from buying things you can't afford. Julie, you almost said amen. That was a miracle. I thought I heard you just a little bit. Maybe, maybe we'd ask for gold. Maybe we'd ask for silver. Uh, for sure, most of us would treat God like a genie, I imagine, and try to get our wishes granted. I know one thing I'd ask for is two sinks in our house instead of one in our bathroom so I don't have to wait two hours for my wife to be done before I can brush my teeth. Amen. Amen. I don't think it ever took Crazy Horse two hours to put on war paint. <laughs> but all joking aside, Amen. I'd like to point out some things here as far as what our God is looking for as, a, you know, as far as in a person's heart when he asks that question. Or, in other words, what he's looking for to be able to ask someone that question. Because that's the, as far as I know, that's the only place in the Bible he did that. In regard to offering somebody anything they wanted, um, if you know some place in Scripture that it happens again, let me know. Well, not right now, because that would make me look bad. Uh, but what God was looking for and found in Solomon, this is a very... It's always intrigued me, this portion of Scripture here. And to ask such a question to some, somebody, ask me anything you want. Um, number one, let's notice some things here. Number one, notice Solomon recognizes God's mercy and kindness and is thankful for it. I wonder if that's what God is looking for. Before he would ask you, what do you want? You name it, I'll give it to you. And Solomon said, 
Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on the throne as it is today. I wonder if God is looking for someone that has recognizes God's mercy and kindness. Have you recognized, have you recognized God's kindness and mercy lately? Amen. Do you realize you're breathing because of God? Right. Mercy and kindness. Because he said, Joseph, I'll let you breathe your next breath. That's the only reason you're alive. His mercy and kindness. But we look, we don't, we don't recognize that because we live a life that's too fast. When's the last time you thank God for showing mercy and kindness? Do you realize you could be in prison or in a mental hospital right now? Or not saved on your way to hell? If it wasn't for the mercy and the kindness of Jesus Christ. Your children could be locked up in jail. Your children could be unsaved on their way to hell. Your kids could have made some horrible choices. I mean real horrible choices. My kids never came and said, Dad, I'm, I think I'm a girl. Okay, instead of a boy or vice versa. Just think how horrible that would be. Okay, and it's happened to a lot of people, especially nowadays. <clears throat> That's never happened to me. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it might, if not for the kindness and mercy of Jesus Christ. Do you ever thank God for having a job? Amen. While others don't? For having health while others don't? For having a home while others don't? Others living in the shelter or in the street? When's the last time you said, God, thank you for that mercy and kindness Amen. that you have showed me? Solomon recognized that. He actually recognized the mercy and kindness God showed his daddy, David. But God, God saw that. And you ever thank God for his mercy and kindness that allows you to have a good marriage? while others don't. You ever recognize God's mercy and kindness that your bills are paid? And others stay up night, biting their fingernails, wondering how they're going to pay their bills? You ever recognize God's mercy and kindness for a mind that recognizes Him as Lord and Savior? You realize how fortunate you are to know that Jesus is God, that Jesus is real. How fortunate you are when billions of other people don't. While billions of other people recognize Allah as their God, or Confucius as their God, or the Virgin Mary, or Joseph Smith, you name it, Allah. You know how fortunate you are for the mercy and kindness that God showed you and me? That we understand that Jesus Christ is everything. That he made the worlds and he made you. And he gives me everything. And everything I ever have or ever will have comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. You know how fortunate you are to know that? Have you ever woke up and said, wow, thank you for giving me a mind that knows you, God. Knows what this world is all about. Jeremiah. Two, can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. God knows when you forget him. God knows when I forget to thank him for his mercy and his goodness and kindness. That's what God's looking for. Okay? That's what God is looking for. He's not looking for what we think. God wants me to have so many people saved. God wants me to have so many people on my bus route or in my Sunday school class or in my church. God wants this and that. Uh-uh. That too, but God's looking for mercy and kindness in a person and to recognize his mercy and kindness. Amen. 
Are you guilty? I am. I try not to. The last few years of my life, I've made sure that every day I start with prayers that thank Him. Nothing but thank Him for salvation to begin with, and then the list goes on. <clears throat> How many days have you forgotten God in the morning and rushed off to work or rushed off to school without even a simple thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul? Or a good morning, Father, thank you for waking me up when others haven't woke up. Maybe they woke up in hell. Maybe they woke up in heaven. But you woke up and you still have length of days. You could still make a difference for Jesus. Look, God is not so much looking for what you've done for him as much as he's looking for a thank you for allowing you to breathe. You can't impress God. You think you can impress God with what you do? He's God, man. He's done it all. He made it all. He made you. That's why he sits in the heavens and laughs at us. You can't impress him. But you can impress him by thanking him. That's what he's looking for. He doesn't need anything else. You can't impress him with the money you give. You can't impress him with your church attendance. You can't impress him with soul saved. You can't impress him with anything. You might want to stay awake in church. That might impress him. He's impressed by a thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your mercy. Let me ask you a question. I'm all full of questions tonight, aren't I? What do you think God's will for your life is? Anybody know? Everybody's searching for God's will and they think it's a big thing and they wait all their life. What is God's will for me to be a preacher? God's will Is God's will for me to uh, be a, a, somebody's wife or somebody's husband. We all think it's to do something. God calling me to preach, to be a witness, to submit to my husband, to treat my wife as Christ treats the church, to move here, to move there, to do this, to do that. What is God's will for my life? The Bible tells you what God's will for your life is. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and you and you to be thankful we skip that and that's God's will for our life notice in everything though in everything you could spend all day in prayer just thanking God most of my prayer during the day is thanking him I, now i got to remember to add some things so I don't just go over the same list and, you know, make it some kind of uh, cycle I'm in. But I've got the list in my head and my heart, and I thank him. And that takes most of my prayer time, to thank him. And I think that's why God blesses my life. Amen. Amen. And that's why God blessed Solomon. And that's why God will bless you. And I see different people, the life God blesses, and I think they live a life of thankfulness. Thankfulness. A life that recognizes God's mercy and kindness. And they thank him for it. Solomon was thankful for God's mercy and kindness. Maybe that's why God said, hey, you ask anything you want and I'll give it to you. I think he asked for a thousand wives later on, and that cost him. Because <laughs> they, they started worshiping all kinds of things. Um, but that's two big things we can't live without. Okay? Recognizes God, recognizing God's mercy, his goodness and kindness. How many days have you forgot to even meet with him before you rushed off? I'm not getting mad at anybody. I'm, not, I'm, I'm preaching to myself too. This is to help us all. I want God's blessing on my life. 
I want my grandkids to turn out right. I want them to love God as much as I love Him, as much as my wife loves God. I want them. That, see, that would be my joy now to see Jackson or, or what's her name? Jackson and <laughs> Mackenzie in Brooklyn to love Jesus and see them winning souls and see them singing in a choir someday. That's all I live for now. I mean, you know, not all, but that's a biggie. When you say you love your grandkids, that ought to be part of it. Most of my time in prayer during the day is thanking God for something. Thinking I'm, I'm not in prison while other pastors are in prison. I'm still alive while other pastors have been killed. I thank him for our trailer back there. Are you ever thank God for that trailer back there? No. Why should you? I thank him for our vans. I pray for every part in those vans and buses that I can think of. I'm not much of a mechanic. For our new couples that have come to this church. People, workers, servants God has given us. Thank for all the families. You thank them for the new carpet we're going to get? How about those sinks and toilets that are fairly new five years ago? I still thank them for them. <clears throat> have you thanked them for a baptismal heater so we're able to baptize? Be honest, have you thanked him lately for that? Have you thanked him for the AC? Now somebody ought to thank him for the AC. Have you thanked him for Mark Zinmeister that keeps him going? Mark was just over my house. Woke, I mean, he disturbed me. I was watching Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I heard the dogs barking. I thought it was some Jehovah false witness. But it was Mark, and they were working on the, on the vents. Have you thanked him for our new roof that was put on about 15 years ago? Have you thanked him for allowing us to park in the school parking lot over there? Well, they could very easily put one of those pole gates up, very easy, like they have across the city. Have you thanked God for our Sunday school teachers, your children, your health, kids that come on our vans and buses? A mind and a heart that even acknowledges God while millions don't even do that. That you're able to show you love him by doing what he has asked you to do. To be obedient to his word. When so many billions are not obedient, you are. Not perfect. But you try to be obedient to his word. Can you, can you imagine... Imagine how, uh, how blessed you are just to, just to know to do that. So you can live forever knowing that you are obedient and Jesus knowing that you are obedient to him. While others will be in heaven that weren't obedient. And a lot more in hell that will never hear God again, never know God again. That didn't know him in the first place. They'll be out of God's mind for all eternity. That's the epitome of loneliness, I believe. 1 Kings 3.3 3. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. But he walked in obedience. He was obedience. He wasn't perfect by any long shot. But he tried like you and I. He tried to be obedient. <clears throat> Dad, you should teach your children to walk with God. And he did that. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. He, changed, he charged Solomon his son saying, saying, I go the way of the, all the earth. Be thou strong therefore and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God, the ways of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the laws of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest wherever thou turnest thyself. 
Dads, are you teaching your children that God is a merciful, kind God and you should walk in his ways just because he is merciful and kind? You should do it anyway. But man, okay. The second thing God looks for after thankfulness is humbleness. Humbleness. Solomon was a humble dude. He said, I don't even know how to go in and out of a door. I'm as a child. He didn't say, oh, I'm going to be king. I'm this and that. God chose me. Yeah, I know. Figures he'd choose me. No. He was very humble. Very humble. That's a hard thing for us to do in this world. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made my servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I don't know how to go out or come in. Humbleness is the key. Maybe that's why he asked Solomon anything you want. Do you want God to give you things? Things that are added unto you, things that you want like we talked about this morning? Then you might want to try to recognize God's mercy and kindness on your life and be a little humble. God's not looking for you to have some great victory or to pastor a bunch of people or to be the best mom or the best dad or the best human. He just wants you to be thankful and humble. He was humble. He humbled himself as a servant. They wanted to crown him, right? No, he said, I'm a servant. They wanted to make him king. He said, no, I'm a servant. I'm here to serve people. God wants you and me to realize that this thing called motherhood and fatherhood or being a husband or a wife, this thing called marriage is bigger than you. Amen. You need help like Solomon did. You need help. He recognized that. And God saw that. Man, this guy, he knows how merciful and kind I am. And he's very humble. And he realizes he can't do this. He needs me. That God, man, man, he got anything he wanted from God. I mean, it's just a couple of things here that you might want to try. Yeah. You might want to try because you love him, and he deserves this. He deserves your life. Amen. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The only reason you live is Jesus Christ. Amen. The only reason you're saved is Jesus Christ. The only reason you're going to heaven when you die, because he brought the blood. Amen. Hello? Amen. The only blood that really matters is his. And that washed away all your sin. What a song, huh? Solomon realized this king thing was bigger than he was and that he better get help. This pastor thing is bigger than me. I better get help. This Sunday school thing is bigger than me. I better get help. This mom thing is bigger than me. This dad thing, this father, this husband thing, this wife thing is bigger than me. I better get help. Solomon could have asked for riches. He could have thought he knew everything. We don't know it all. We know very little. That's why we need to ask for help. When you come into my office for counseling, I'm not looking to say, I told you so. Are you kidding? Or to browbeat you or to be mad at you or judge you. I'm looking for an answer for you. Because you're still alive, so that means God can still use you, and he wants to still. You're still on planet Earth. That means God still wants to use you tomorrow or today, at least. So we shouldn't judge people and get rid of them and toss them aside, because God still wants to use them. Amen. He still wants to use you. I, I'm looking for an answer to help you so you can better your family, your marriage, your life. Life's too long to be miserable for 70 years, isn't it? Or whatever. I can better do that. Help, if I, 
Look, if you're humble and you recognize how merciful and God, God is and how kind he is, I can help you a lot better. If somebody comes to my office and they think they know, I'm the most humble guy I know. <laughs> what? I said, wait, wait a minute. You don't really mean that, do you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But if you recognize that you can't do anything without him, and that God is so merciful, and everything you have is because of his mercy and kindness, then I can work with that. We can do something. You and I. I, I can help you. You've already been helped by God to even know that. And God wants to help you more than I do. Some of you come in, I'm going, and in the back of my mind, he deserves it. He deserves it. How, how can I help you? He deserves it. <laughs> no. Well, maybe. But I'm still going to help you. Because by the mercy of, if not for the mercy of God, there go I. And there's my problem. I'm coming in for marriage counseling. I'm coming in to, you know, try to get some sin out of my life. <clears throat> God, we don't know it all. Let's ask God for help. Pride goeth before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. I've been there. I've taken that fall because of a haughty, because of pride. I don't like it. It's not fun. Number three, last one. We're already almost out of here. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Right? Number three. God is looking for a person who is understanding. Not that you understand a book or a verse. Understanding in the sense that, hey, I understand. You blew it. I understand that. I understand. Now let's get back up and let's go. Let's ask God to forgive us and let's, let's do it. You can do better. Understanding people. Boy, it took me a while to understand people. I just wanted to preach at people when I came out of college. Because, you know, that was fun. Then I realized, wait a minute. This is not fun. These are people's lives. These are, you're here to help people to not be miserable. To keep their marriage. To keep their children. God's looking at a person who is understanding. Okay, maybe, you know, that's why God gave Solomon anything he wanted. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Give me an understanding heart. So when people come in and I have to judge, I understand. They're but flesh like I am. And I've blown it just like they have. Help me to understand. You know, as Christian people, why isn't there more people that understand, folks? We want to just toss them aside. We want to kick them out of the church. We want to do this or that. Kick them out of our lives. Take them off our friend list. Understand, you have to do some, you have to do some of that sometimes. You, know, you don't want to be influenced by evil people. You know, if, if you've got a problem with gossip, you don't want to hang around. You don't want to have a friend that's a gossip. Right. That's not going to help you. That's going to hurt you. But most of the time, we can, have, we can understand people and their hurts. You know, that's, that's what Christ was all about. He didn't throw anybody away. Not only to discern good and evil, but to have compassion. That's what that means, understanding. People who come from a mean world and a world that has chewed them up and spit them out are looking for people that understand them. That jaguar that used to sit over there, that jaguar man who got saved, he was, you know why he came here? He's looking for somebody to understand how much he's hurting inside. It's not the outside. The outside is a good, a good uh, a flag of what's going on in his heart, though. And you understood that. Nobody judged him. We loved him. He died of a heart attack about three months later. Can you believe that? But in heaven, okay, uh, they're glad. All heaven rejoices because we didn't just judge him and throw him aside, okay? Even though that's pretty scary, having a jaguar in the church. 
could have bit somebody. Uh, but that we understood how people's hearts are hurting, especially nowadays. Understand people are different. They stop and realize that they were not understood also. They understand that people like them need kindness and love and caring. Right? Amen. And unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and depart from evil is understanding. God says a person who really understands is a person who gets away and stays away from ungodly things of this world. Ungodly friends, music, dress, talk, TV, movies. If you really understand, then you get away from that stuff. You live the holiest life you can. Get away from evil. That's part of understanding also. Cussing. Watching your iPhone and people cuss at you. Are you kidding me? You can barely watch it. You can barely look at Facebook or anything without them cussing. Dirty jokes at work or at school, bad behavior from your friends. Understanding is depart from evil, the Bible says. Witchcraft, spiritualism. I don't care if the person's good or not. It's wicked, it's evil. This new age junk, it's evil, God says. Anything that takes the place of being in church on Sunday is evil. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I try to be understanding because I was that person once. I didn't go to church on Sunday night. I watched my wife carry us all our kids, drag one by her foot and had two in her hands <laughs> while I watched football and said, hey, I did my, I, I was a good Catholic. I did my thing on Sunday morning. Let my wife do, do the rest. Right. We let things in our life take the place do you remember, I'm not going to read, I was going to read the story of that lady who the Pharisees, the religious crowd, caught in adultery in John 8, 3 through 11. And they all wanted to stone her. Stone her! The book of Moses says, the law of Moses says, anybody caught in adultery to stone them. Jesus was writing something on the ground while they were saying that while they were picking up their stones to stone this lady that was caught in adultery. But he looked up and said, you who have not committed adultery, basically, you, you that are without sin and you don't understand and you have no mercy and kindness, throw the first stone, I'll let you. Bash your head in. And all the stones were dropped and people... The religious people walked away. Solomon was different. He recognized mercy and kindness, and he was very humble. And he understood that he was nothing without God. Right. And he understood other people, how they would sin and come to him. And he had to have understanding. Jesus had understanding before you condemn somebody, try to understand them. Before God ever gave Solomon wisdom, Solomon had thankfulness, humbleness, and understanding. And because of that, he got asked, you can have anything you want. What do you want, Solomon? And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, see thou tell no man. But go thy way, show thyself to the priests, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus went in and came them, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. I don't know how this got in the message. <laughs> I have no idea how this got in the message. See, I make mistakes too. <clears throat> It was supposed to be 1 Kings 3, 10 through 14. Let's turn there. Is that up there? Yeah. Keep going. Oh, this, that's the, that's the uh, woman caught in adultery, right? Yeah, I got it. I just didn't, because of time, I'm out of time. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. 
Just forget that ever happened, okay? <laughs> I got to retire, man. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, has not asked for thyself long life, neither has thou asked riches for thyself, nor asked of thine, in, of thine enemies, but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before, neither after thee shall any like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be among thee the kings like unto thee all thy days. If thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. He gave him riches at the end, didn't he? After that, after he saw that the kindness and mercy and humbleness and understanding, he said, look, I'm going to give you everything you were going to ask for. You were thought to ask for, but you said no. That goes with this morning's message. Seek first God's thinking and his heart. And then all the other things will be added unto you. Solomon, that happened to Solomon. I didn't even realize that that correlated with this morning's message, but it didn't. I got to quit. Let's bow our heads. Thank you, Father, for being a God who would ask.